what we had the opportunity to do was to measure the aluminium content of the brain of individuals who died with a diagnosis of autism. So we were able to do two things. We, we were able to measure how much aluminium is in the brain of individuals who died with autism, but also we were able to look at the aluminium in the tissue using a microscopy technique called fluorescence. The amount of aluminium in the brain tissue was, I would say, extraordinarily high, very high. My group has measured the aluminium content of probably more than 100 human brains. And these brain tissues taken from the individuals with the diagnosis of autism were some of the highest we've measured bar none. The only ones we've seen of a similar were a recent study in familial Alzheimer's. So in this relatively young group of people, some 13, 14, 15 years of age, we saw more aluminium than we've seen in almost any other circumstance. So this in itself is a very important finding. Perhaps equally important, if not more important, were the, the microscopy studies. The microscopy studies enabled us to identify where the aluminium was in the brain tissue. When we looked at our brains from people with a diagnosis of autism, we found something completely different and something we've never seen before as yet in any other uh, set of human brains. We found that the majority of aluminium was actually inside cells, intracellular. Some of it was inside neurons. But actually the majority of it was inside non-neuronal cell populations. So we found that these cells were heavily loaded with aluminium. We also saw evidence that cells in the lymph and in the blood were passing into the brain. So they were carrying with them a cargo of aluminium from the body into the brain. This is the first time in any human brain tissue we have seen this. So this is a standout and as yet unique observation in autism. For myself, it very much implicates aluminium in the etiology of autism. That doesn't mean aluminium causes it, but it means that it's almost certainly playing a role in the disease. Before we did this piece of research, there were a number of possible links between aluminium and autism. I did not see that the science there was strong enough in any way to make that a really positive link. So I did not see a role for aluminium in autism and I didn't see a role for aluminium in vaccines in autism. I have to change my mind now on both of these. I have to change my mind that aluminium has a role in autism. I believe it now does. You know, I've often said when asked you know, should we stop using aluminium adjuvants in vaccines? And I've sort of said no because I didn't think that there was a safe um, alternative. I'm not saying safer alternative, I'm saying safe alternative. That doesn't mean that I didn't believe that aluminium could be responsible for some of the effects that we see following vaccination. But now because I have seen the same cells from the, where, that we will see at an injection site carrying a cargo of aluminium into the brain tissue of individuals who died with autism, I would now say, I would now say that we have to think very carefully about who receives a vaccine which includes an aluminium adjuvant. You know, we need to think carefully, is this vaccine a life-saving vaccine or not? And if it isn't, don't have, an, have it with an aluminium adjuvant. We're not necessarily talking about immediate effects either. We're talking about potential long-term effects, as we've seen with autism. This is not something that is necessarily immediate, and it is something that can happen over months, years, or even decades. So we need now to be extremely careful and cautious about when we decide to use a vaccine which has an aluminium adjuvant. It worries me enormously to see these data and I was not, I was not worried before we had these data. It is incredibly difficult to do this research. Mm -hmm. 
No government funded this research. This research came because of philanthropy. It came because of individuals who wanted to know answers and were prepared to use their own money. We pay our government and our government should really be using our money to fund this type of research.